Hello and welcome back and today it's going to be a bit of a garden with me vlog follow me around the garden as I do gardening jobs video in other words I don't really know what I'm going to call it yet but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you around as I'm tidying and clearing the garden so I'm just going to be doing some weeding cleaning up and just general stuff that's gotten out of hand because over the last few few weeks I've been doing little bits in the garden but I haven't really been keeping it in the best nick that it could be so that's why today I'm going to spend time to sort of spruce it up a bit and make it look nice. So first thing to do is mow the lawn. I've got the mower out ready, as you can see there, and I am going to mow the lawn. And I do the main lawn quite short, um, mainly because it looks striping. I like a nice looking lawn. And then I do the rest of it um, one notch higher on the height just on the mower. And this is because in dry weather, Having short grass isn't as good because it goes brown quicker, but in the, when it is dry I will do this main shorter part. I do it normally a bit higher when it's going to be dry or warm to try and put less stress on the grass that is. So now get on with the video. So as you can see I just I've got a whole wheelbarrow full of grass clippings now and I'll use these to put in my compost as a compost activator and as a green material and I'll also mulch some things with it. But the trouble is last week I got a full wheelbarrow as well, so I've got a lot of grass to be dealing with and I've well I've almost got too much. I put a thick mulch and a lot in the compost last week, so ideally I want to try and find something else to do with it. But I'll try and find as many things to mulch as I possibly can. And now I think I'm going to go and um, do some weeding. I'll figure out what to do with this after because that's to worry about later. I'm going to go and do some weeding and clearing now and I'll take you along the way. And here this is what the lawn looks like now. It is quite low the way I cut it. I think it's, I don't know, that's probably about just no more than two inches probably. And this is fine until it's dry, then it starts to go brown quickly, so that's why I cut it a bit higher, as I said, um, when it's dry. And if you notice my hair, the wind will change what my hair looks like by the second. So I'm now going to do a bit of weeding, as I said. I've got this weeding and planting tool. In the background here, this net sort of tunnel thing, I weeded that the other day, so I, that doesn't need doing. But this bit, or where basically the whole vegetable garden needs a bit of doing. And there's a lot of dandelions, a lot of creeping buttercups, and a lot of nettles, and that's the most. And there's another weed as well that I'm not sure what it's called, and it creeps into my beds from my little wild bit. Um, but yeah, my, as you might be able to see in the shop, my cucumber's starting to get quite big now, my gherkin. And I'm going to have to try and avoid the nettles quite well because I've got no gloves on, as you can see. I'm just putting them in this and I'll put them in the compost bin after. And they're all just little weeds and it's starting to get on my nerves really because I like to have my vegetable garden quite perfect. There's some ivy as well in there that's creeping around. This bit here isn't actually too bad, but this bit up here is a bit worse because it's under netting, I do it less. So I'm just gonna move up here. And I think I'm gonna, well this netting's not even kept down properly, it's just got rocks on it as you can see. So I'm gonna properly give this a bit of TLC because that's what it needs at the moment. 
I, w I didn't just turn into a ghost, I was just pulling off the netting. That's the trouble with wood chips, is uh, when you kneel on it, you get all on your hands like that. So I've got, in this bed, I've got some Swedes, cabbage, carrots, and then some Swiss chard at the end. And then there's a new bed at the end with be beetroot and sprouts. But it looks like I might need to put another sprout seedling in one space, because the original plant I planted has died. Oh, and I forgot to say, I've also got a lot of weeds growing in this bed, but unintentionally. So I thought this would be a nice little vlog type video, just to sort of an easy watch, because it's all good doing how-tos, but sometimes we need a video that we can just sit and watch and chill out and enjoy, rather than having to learn things all the time. And if you do, I will still do uh, how-to videos, but if you still want to have things like this on my channel, then do let me know down below. And I don't know about you, but I can never get the whole root out on dandelions. So that's why I've got clusters of them here, because they just keep coming back. And even this tool that I thought would be able to get them out, it gets some of them out, but nowhere near as many as it should be. I'm just taking the lower eaten and yellowing leaves off on my greyhound cabbages to avoid attracting slugs. And whilst I'm doing this I'd just like to make sure you've gone down below and hit the subscribe button to, and hit the notification bell as well just to make sure that you're notified next time I upload a video or every time I upload a video which is twice a week at the moment if you didn't watch my video the other day because I'm preparing for when I go back to school that, so that I have enough a bank of videos so that I can bring you vid two videos a week. So you're up there now because I thought you might like a bit of a change of scenery. So as you can see this is a cluster of dandelions I'm trying to get rid of. And my problem with dandelions is probably my own fault as well because this wood chip path here doesn't have any membrane underneath or weed suppressant because I didn't want plastic in my garden but I've got a really thick layer of wood chip so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and I'm just using this tool to scrape the subsurface a bit like a hoe would just to get rid of any young weeds and hopefully they'll dry out and die on the top So this bit down here seems to be com oh no whoops I missed a bit down here and there was believe it or not a wooden border between the path and the bed but that's sort of rotten and gone below the surface now so it's just going to become part of the soil now oh I just found a bit there but I'm just I'm not too fussed about borders anymore and I will be making my other bed the other side that that side of the path a bit more well, wider next winter so that I can fit more in next year because you can never have enough homegrown food and here I'm just trying to keep it clear from around the base of the carrots and I might thin these out some of these a bit more just take a few more out and the importance of thinning, you've just got, sometimes you've just got to take or sacrifice some bits of food so that you get bigger other ones. And now I'm just going to move down to the rest of the bed down there where there's a lot of weeds because it's a new bed and I didn't put any cardboard or compost or old compost bags over the top for long enough to kill the weeds off. So this here, as you can see, looks almost like a lawn. Well, it's because it used to be a lawn. So did all of this garden. But I've managed to turn it into this 
food producing space. Oh, I've just got a cleaver that's attached itself to me. I'm hoping this video will turn out, it might be a bit long, might be 20 or 30 minutes, I never know, but it, I hope it inspires people and I hope it's just an easy watch and relaxing to watch, rather than my how to videos, which are still going to be coming out, but I want more like this, where you can just sit down, not worry about anything and just watch. I can't believe how many weeds are actually in here. This is just homemade compost, this soil here, that I put on top and then I put old compost bags straight on top. And what this did then was, well, what it was meant to do was suppress the weeds, but as you can see, it didn't really work because they've all come back. But hopefully, they all slow down but I'm not sure they will somehow as long as I keep on top of it then that's fine and I've got a clump of four my well, two clumps of four beetroots here and these are just multi sown so they're going to be what well, when I pick the biggest one out of the bunch they all thin them out naturally there's also loads of great books as well that you can get, which I'll be linking down below in the description that you can check out some of my favourite gardening books that help with growing vegetables for the first time. I've done a good enough job on there, I'm just going to take all of this to the compost. So this here, this is quite a lot actually. A big bucket full and that's going to go in the compost hopefully i'll have a lot more of this because i need to fill my compost bin up and that's about it for the vegetable patch i think i've just had a walk around and i've checked and it looks like that's about it so i'm just going to check i think my flower beds are just about okay as well so now i don't think there's much so there's actually a lot less than i thought so i was getting overwhelmed and thinking that there was a lot to do for no reason because there wasn't actually that much it was that bed and not much more so there's a few bits of grass and things growing in the flower bed. There's a bit of deadheading to do, as there always is, because a work in a work in a garden is never done, because everything's always growing. So I'm going to go and have a potter about now. I'll keep filming. So now I'm just at my vegetable, uh, my flower bed, sorry. Um, and there's not still, as I said, there's not much to do. These here aren't weeds. They're actually all forget-me-nots that have self-seeded since they finished flowering and all the seeds set. And um, there's nothing this end. Oh, there's a. We've got a tree up there that I often film under, and it spreads like mad. It sets seed out everywhere, and it also sends suckers through the roots. And especially if it's been damaged, like recently in the wind, it just goes mad. And we find them everywhere because there's, there's two of them, and there was only one when we moved in, and the second one has self seeded as well. So. Just keep an eye out for trees that are spreading if you don't want any more trees. Because they can be quite a nuisance. There's a lot of forget-me-nots that have self-seeded here. I'm going to have to pull some of these out and I'll pop these on some of these forget-me-nots when they're a bit bigger so that I can get free plants. Because who doesn't love free plants? Even non-gardeners must love free plants. In fact, I think some of these forget-me-nots now might already be ready to be potted on. So I think I might do that now in this video. And that'll be some, something interesting for you to watch as well. Because I don't think I've ever done potting on self-seeded things before on this channel. There's one more bit of grass here. 
on the most part these beds because it's been no dig for three years this bed it's really not many weeds that we do get the lawn creeping in but it's not the end of the world that's a wildflower I'm gonna leave that because it's pretty and that's it so I'm just gonna go and get a module tray with some multi-purpose compost and I'll prick out some of these forget-me-nots with this tool into those and show you so I've just sat down next to the flower bed you just saw me at and as I said I filled up a module tray with some multi-purpose compost this peat free make sure you get peat free and I've I've been weeding as I said but I've also the self-seeded forget-me-nots are ready to be pricked out into a tray like this so I've got them here and this is a great way of getting free plants is by letting a plant even if it's a wildflower self-seed and then you take the plants so just pricking them out and then I'll give them a good soaking not all of them will survive but that's why I've got a tray of 20 because then if that percentage is 70% then about 14 of these will survive which is a good great outcome so there's some of them that are still small but I just try and gently tug them out with a little bit of roots on the end because you don't want them to have no roots because then they won't be able to intake any water or nutrients out of the soil some of them get more roots than others just like this one but they should be fine and this tool I use for everything and I'll link this down below as well and there's something about propagating and getting free plants that I just love about gardening because it's something that not everybody knows about which is also a problem because some, more people should know but it it's just cool because you're saving money and you're getting really nice plants from it and often healthier plants and you know where they've come from so you know they're organic and they come from your own country hopefully then when these have rooted even more I'll put them into their own individual pots or I'll part plant them out into different parts of the garden or give them away to neighbours because I might have a bit too much because there's some self-seeded ones all around my flower beds already and I don't really want more. I might have to go and get another module tray because I don't like missing out on plants and there's a lot left and I don't want to lose any. So I'll get another 20 tray in a minute. And this is just a tray that I've reused from plants I got from a garden centre so make sure if you have plastic around your garden make sure you use it till it completely can't be used anymore and then get rid of it properly by recycling and I know some people have asked me what tools to get for gardening and the answer to that is what type of gardening and also you don't actually need tools tools are well the best tool in my opinion is your hands and then tools like this just make your life a bit easier so this has made it a bit quicker for me because otherwise I would have had to do it with my fingers but I can just use it quickly but without tools I could have done just as many but it just would have taken maybe a little bit longer or would have been a bit more difficult and fiddly and I'll show you in a minute what I've been propagating in my greenhouse and I've got about I think it must be pretty about 30 cuttings in there now because I just get carried away when I get free plants which I think any gardener could but I've got a bit too many in there now so I'm I've been restricted I'm not allowed to take any more cuttings and that's me who's told myself that because I think it's going a bit far now and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit everything in so either I have to make a new flower bed or I'm gonna to have to give them away or sell them now I'm going to go and get another tray and I'll fill it but I won't show you that I'm just going to show you my propagating bit in my greenhouse now so this is my propagating area in my greenhouse this is a, a grid over a old barrel and I've taken two cuttings from my dried gork tomatoes one current cutting I've got 
six rosemary cuttings. This is a, a bit of a, I don't know whether I'm pushing it here. I'm trying to take a cutting from a potato. Could work, but who cares if it doesn't. I've got two dahlias and I've already got a big dahlia one from earlier this year. I've got honeysuckle, clematis, heuchera, and I've also got eight wallflower cuttings and these bleeding hearts cuttings, which I'm giving a go. I'm not sure, I've never taken cuttings from them before, but I looked into it and it can work, so it's worth a go. And it's just a bit of plant that you lose, so it's not the end of the world, and it's a good bit of fun whilst you do it. So why not give a go propagating your own plants? I've also got a good video called How to Get Free Plants on my YouTube channel where I speak about propagating things. So I've now, I got carried away and I've potted on 40 good seedlings, forget-me-nots, and now I'm going to give them a really good watering. And I don't think I've got much more else to do in the garden today. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you enjoyed this type of video, then please let me know down in the comments and I can make more like this in the future. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.